jump in to some of the questions from the show. Now, um, I want to talk about the, the third season uh, is seemingly expanding the rules of the game with characters who are able to uh, jump between dimensions on their own. How far do we lean into the science fiction in the third season? We do a good deal. Um, and we also introduce a relatively new um, concept, which comes from uh, some sequel chapters that my dad wrote um, for um, a sequel to the, the original novel that was never published. Wow. So it was fun to, to bring in this new big idea um, and, uh, and, and you'll see it. It's interesting. That's a, um, it's good. Uh, good. So in judging from the trailer, also, there's a big thir uh, thrust into the third season with the actual uprising. Um, how has the scope and budget changed? So your character has gone through quite a journey from the unwitting citizen, uh, to face the resistance or the face of the resistance in the marketing. Uh, how, is, how will the journey change this season coming up for her? changes tremendously she's she's become rather fixated on on this this aspect of ultimately this this supremacy that is uh, threatening not just our reality but every reality so she's um, she's incredibly driven to to stop that as much as possible but there's a there's a whole sort of emotional journey as well that that, that coincides and um, she's she's taken on a diff a totally different focus as far as the resistance and different aspects <laughs> Uh, Jayla, Helen, Helen was the first to deal with Thomas's decision at the end of the season. Um, how will she cope with that loss? And uh, how provocative will she become? <laughs> well, the second question, you'll get the answer to that tomorrow. Um, we see Helen go on a journey that I don't think anyone could have anticipated watching her story up until this point. Um, how does anyone deal with the loss of a child sure. under any circumstances? These being particularly devastating because, um, as we've discussed, uh, the, the reason that Thomas is gone is because we did a really good job of raising the perfect Nazi. And he believes in this ideology that um, ultimately had ma means that he was taken away from us. So I think dealing with that price and um, we start to see her really unmoored in season three because she doesn't really know where she belongs and what... Uh, the thing that is most important to her, her role as a mother and as a wife, have been taken away, in a way. So, yeah, we see her do some pretty radical stuff this season. Um, Joel, your character is a no-nonsense, cutthroat uh, kind of guy. Uh, does playing that character bleed into your real life whatsoever? <laughs> I think the cast will uh, yeah. agree that I'm it's, very it's, much it's like it's that. It's become something of a problem on set. <laughs> I, I admire um, his ability to have clarity of thought and his ability to pursue his objectives in a very he goes from point A to point B uh, in, a, in a straight line whenever he can so it's been great for me because I, I, I don't navigate my life that way um, personally so it's been fun and empowering to be put in a situation where I get to do that now for the cast, where would you like to see all of your characters go uh, to when we get to season four? And, and then for the producer. Well, I mean, um, they are already going. That's a great point. But uh, where would you personally like to see them go if, if you were the writers of the show, per se? The musical episode, yeah. the Christmas episode, the episode where we go to Hawaii and Greg finds a tarantula in his... Uh, no, no, yeah, yeah. that's already been done. Tarantula idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, thanks. Um, I... As far as I'm concerned, I, I always want my character to be um, out of power and out of his element. So I, I would always wish for him never to attain full power because that's very undramatic. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I think it's always more interesting to, um, to not hold the reins. So for me, S Smith is always better when he's challenged, when he's cornered, when he's, you know, in some way the underdog. And also, I, I would always wish for some kind of um, evolution, you know. I want to be the leader of the resistance. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys have slowly led audiences to the water by taking time with the sci-fi element. Um, the first season was more of a period piece. Uh, the second season suddenly started introducing fantasy. Are you guys already thinking about what you guys are going to do for the fourth season? 
in the fourth season. Um, so it's beginning to occur to us. So there's, I mean, I, th I think the evolution of the show has been really exciting to experience. Yeah, it has been. Uh, it's sort of like peeling uh, peeling an onion. Like there's there's just more and more that you see, more and more tears. <laughs> I guess as you go along too. There's. Um, it's it's exciting. It's really exciting to see. Also because it's it's a really challenging show to do. It's asking. Uh, it asks a lot of every department, um, and certainly the writers' room is tasked with so many different challenges. Like you said, it's it's hard to put it into one genre. And I think uh, for a group of people to sort of be on top of such a complex universe is challenging. And I think we're really excited and lucky for where we find ourselves going in season four. Oh, super excited now. Um, so Trudy, or an, uh, another dimension version of her, appears at the end of the season. How much will that? How much will this dominate Juliana's? Uh, Juliana third season um, thank you uh, certainly in a lot of ways it does obviously physically emotionally mentally there's a, there, there are many layers to that um, but I think you know one of the things that I that I am very attached to is that the notion that Avinson put her in front of her put Trudy in front of Juliana to show her tangibly this really what what is possible and so it's almost more about what Trudy represents in a lot of ways um, and it carries her throughout, absolutely. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So if you guys, so obviously you guys are in the course of shooting uh, season four currently. Um, if you guys had to sum up what we can expect without a spoiler in season four in a hashtag, what would that hashtag be? Because I know it's like putting you guys on the spot. Start back there. I'm not on the spot because I just wouldn't do that. Very cooperative at this <laughs> hour of the morning. Apparently, but apologies. I wouldn't reduce it to a hashtag. I, I don't even know what hashtags are. I see them everywhere. There's your answer. Fair enough. Andy. Says you're right. Continuation. How about that? Hashtag continuation. Um, all right. So uh, obviously, um, at the end of the last season, John Smith rose to the ranks as the commander. Uh, as he was mentioned. As he was, as we've mentioned in the world, uh, as the country has changed so much since the premiere, how does how did playing an American who follows the path of becoming a Nazi affect you personally at all? And how I mean, because that's a it is quite drastic to to wrap my head around just as a as a viewer. But being this character for a while, how has that kind of uh, affected you at all? Well, I mean, for me, it it hasn't changed that much to tell you the truth. And we've spoken about this a lot. As, as far as I'm you know, uh, my impression is that reading the, the pilot and when we were doing the pilot, it felt that it was very, very timely even then. I mean, it's, it's become more so, obviously, unfortunately, obviously, but it's only really um, continued in the direction that it evidently was going around about the time we were filming. For me, it's been a great opportunity to, to try to discover um, what it is in people the, you know, for the, a lot of the research for me was about how do people who consider themselves to be reasonable, sure. to be the kind of the good guy in their own lives, how do people talk themselves around that and still see themselves as good? And you see that, you see that all the time. But in terms of the way it's affected my life, I, I don't think it's, it hasn't, um, you know, I don't, I, I, we're all doing something that is, is very anti-fascist. <laughs>